All right, now welcome everybody to Tennis Channel Inside In here on the Tennis Channel Podcast Network. It's Michael's in the Santa Monica studios, and uh, we're joined by a special guest here. It's the off season, the short tennis off season. Joined by someone who turned professional as a young teenager, 14 years old, had a 16 year tennis career, won three titles, reached the top 10. Uh, since then, though, has become more and more known as a coach, leading the U.S. to a Fed Cup title, now the Billie Jean King Cup in 2017. Current coach of the U.S. squad, it's Kathy Rinaldi joining the show. Kathy, thanks for joining Tennis Channel Inside In. Thank you for having me. So so the nickname that I keep hearing from you, from the players, media, coaches that are involved in the game, you're like the conscience of, of women's tennis in America. Like you're you're that stabilizing uh, maternal figure. Do you <laughs> sense that role in, in, uh, in your place in the game? Uh, you know what? It's such an honor um, to be a part of this game still after having a long career and playing with so many great, legendary players. And, um, you know, to still be able to participate and be involved and be in these, uh, the next generations of players that are coming through and to, to be there is just such an honor and it's just so rewarding on every level. Um, so, um, I think when they say that, um, if that's what they are saying about me, um, I'm very grateful and I'm very honored. We're going to get to the coaching things and, and everything that you've done, but the beginning of your tennis origin story, and I'm always curious and fascinated to how you know, greats become greats or how players get involved in the game, your upbringing in Florida and, you know, being the youngest, which seems to be a theme, the youngest seem to be the ones that, that shine brightest, but how did you, with all the sports in your family, there's football, there's tennis, there's other things. How did tennis come to be your dad, a dentist, that there wasn't really that pedigree before you? How did that happen? And how did you excel at such a young age? I'm impressed. I'm impressed you did your homework. <laughs> um, you know what? Tennis was just, um, I played a lot of different sports growing up. My parents um, gave me the opportunity to play many sports. We were a very athletic family. I was the youngest of four. We spent many um, weekends and nights and days at the ballpark. Um, and my mom played tennis socially. And my dad did as well. And um, my siblings um, played. And so that's how I got my first shot at playing. And it was just instant. Um, it was, I was very passionate about the sport. I think I liked it because it was more individual um, than a team. Um, and that, that's something I liked because I guess I could hold my own destiny in my own hands. Um, although I did enjoy playing all the other sports, but tennis was, um, I don't know, it just has everything about it. And I really took a liking to it right away. Uh, and I had great people around me from the start. I mean, I had, you know, great coaches right from the beginning, you know, where I take lessons and they just made it so much fun. Uh, summer camps, um, you know, those, those were just great times for me. And I just, my love just kept growing for the sport and I'm still so passionate about it today. We're not going to get into the specifics, anything age related. I'm not going to do that. But do you think the timing of, do you think the timing of when you were a kid, kind of that American, especially on the women's side, that boom, that explosion of talent and personality, do you think that kind of added to your interest in, in wanting to succeed? Um, I think it was, you know, just everything. I loved everything about tennis. I mean, I loved the sport. I loved, um, you know, the competition, obviously, but I also enjoyed, I think, the relationships and the travel and meeting people. Um, yes, it's very demanding, um, um, even more so for the for the players today, but I really just enjoyed that camaraderie, but yet that competitiveness um, and everything about it. Um, I've got so many wonderful relationships over the years uh, since I was 12, really, and um, they're, they're still incredibly strong. And, um, and I was just around a lot of great people, men and women. You won the, uh, orange ball 18s as a, I think 14 year old, 13, 14 in that range. Was that a, an expected result? Did you kind of just see yourself flying by your peers? And I'm just trying to get a sense of the pro career, the pro track where you were already playing these pro events as a young teenager. What was, you know, I guess, the um, step up like? 
it, you know, I played my first pro tournament when I was 13 and I ha I played a pre pre qualifier to play a pre qualifier to play a qualifier. I had to win, I think it was 11 matches to get to the Linda Carter Maybelline Tennis Classic in Deer, Deerfield Beach, Florida. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I played a lot of tennis when I was younger. I did make a, a big jump when I was 14. I got to the quarterfinals of the French. I mean, you just don't think about those things when you're that young. You're just thinking about what's in front of you and, um, you know, the competition. So I guess the rise was quickly. Um, and, um, you know, it was very different for me because obviously, um, you know, my parents always, uh, Ex expressed um they wanted me to have fun and yeah. so when I was at the national tournaments and things we would compete with with each other but then we'd be off the court playing cards and going for yeah. dinner and and meeting other other families and then all of a sudden you know you're you're 14 and and uh, you know playing my first French Open and really nobody knows me <laughs> and I'm in the third locker room and I'm in the quarterfinals and finally they're like hey you can come up to the big locker room if you like and I, I got a little overwhelmed actually but um, you know it's just all those different experiences are just so wonderful and they really you know yeah. looking back on it now you I think you appreciate appreciate those moments even more as a 14 year old thinking about it than I did then obviously I was just doing my thing and staying in the moment and uh, competing that's something that about tennis that's unique and needs to be more uh, discussed is the locker room setup you start out in the worst ones and you just work your way up when you win matches it's right you just well it's 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 like life right you earn, yeah. you earn your way yeah did and you mentioned it too you're you know, 14 years old playing these big events coming up. Did you lean on your parents to kind of guide you as, you know, that's, that's a kid. You're years away from even being an adult. Was it parents, older siblings, were there friends that were maybe older on the tour that looked out for you? Who did you lean Yes, on? All, all of the above. I mean, I had a wonderful, wonderful parents, a, an incredible relationship with my parents um, that kept me grounded in my family, um, kept me grounded. But then, you know, they were so welcoming on tour. Um, you know, I get to go back to some of the events and I, 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 well, I go back to all the events, but then I see some of them and it's just like, wow, I just really want to thank them because they really did. They kind of took me under their wing and were just so kind and so inviting. Um, even though there was an age gap, it, you know, they really went out of their way um, for me. So I had such a great experience when I first started. Did your interest in tennis, I mean, the, the burnout topic is discussed a lot. You're somebody that can speak to this as a prodigy coming up, playing pro events as a teenager. Did that ever kind of, you know, skelter a little bit with you? Were you ever burned out and feeling your love of the game kind of waning a bit? And listen, you know, you, you go through ups and downs and, and your teenage years are just hard enough to deal with, right? I mean, you're trying to figure out who you are as a person, then you've got this career and you're trying to find the balance, um, you know, that that's life. And uh, so it's not, you know, I always like to tell the girls, it's not always, you know, it's not a straight shot forward. It is a little bit of a climb. You might take two steps forward. You might take a couple steps back. But you got to really enjoy the journey um, because it does go by fast. And um, the experiences, I mean, we're just so uh, blessed and fortunate to be able to have that experience as a professional athlete and everything that that brings. Um, and yes, it, you know, you have a lot to deal with and, you know, there's pressure and there's stress. Um, and, you know, I think it's just so important to have that great team around you. Yeah. And I was really able to do that. How did you stay? positive stay committed after the unfortunate injury in 1987 does it kind of feel like that you had two careers because that was the setback there was a lot of question marks there you respond in, in 89 with the comeback player of the year but how are you able to mentally get past such a difficult moment off the court yeah that was that was a growing up moment that was a life lesson um that was not easy to to get through as any athlete will tell you but Again, I think having things in perspective, having, you know, tennis and life, I think um, just knowing that, um, you know, you're so much more than, than just a tennis player, right? You're a person, you've got, uh, um, 
so many things that you can do in this in this lifetime. And I think that that got me through and just the positivity. Um, you know, I, I surround myself with positive people. And, um, you know, I'm not saying that I didn't have days I was down because I really loved to play and compete. And it was a confusing time. But, you know, you feel you feel uh, your time with other things and, um, you know, and people and try to enjoy that time because, you know, knowing that ho hopefully I'm going to get back to playing, I might as well make the most of this time while, while I have it off as well. Do you think those ups and downs maybe kind of affected how you see and coach the game now? It's always that fascinating debate, right? The best players, the players that had Hall of Fame careers might not be the best coaches because they can't relate to the other players that maybe struggle or had to fight or overcome so much adversity. Do you think that shaped you a little bit? Um, I think so. Yes. I mean, I had uh, great coaches around me, my father and uh, Andy Brandy, uh, Brian Goffrey. I mean, I'm going to start listing people mm -hmm. because I'll forget somebody, but those people really made a big impact um, on me and on my life. And I think um, the experiences, like you said, going through um, a lot of different experiences, being young, uh, having a, a long career, having the injuries, um, I think that that does give me some perspective, but I think as a coach, um, I think it's really important too, because the game evolves. Um, we always ask the player to have a growth mindset. We also have to have a growth mindset and look at things, um, as they are today and not get too stuck on, on the, on the past, but also, but I, you know, being able to tap into some of those experiences definitely does help me as a coach. You know, and I, I definitely have a lot of compassion um, for what the players are going through and maybe what they're thinking, what they're feeling. And I always try to put myself in other people's shoes to to help coach. Makes makes total sense to me. Uh, and before we go on from your playing career, I do want to know stories from playing the greats. What were some of the or who is like the toughest or who's the player that gave you nightmares or? you know, some of the battles you had, cause you played the all time greats in women's tennis that era. Yeah, I, I did. And it's, uh, you know, I learned so much from them and being surrounded by strong women has really helped me. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I really didn't enjoy playing Chrissy too much. <laughs> I don't think many people did. <laughs> she didn't give me much. Yeah. Um, you know, so that, um, you know, she was always just so tough. Um, I, I enjoy playing Steffi Graf. I mean, what an incredible champion. I mean, there's just so many. Martina, um, all the way down to Venus and Serena in my last match. So I, you know what? There's just so many great players. Um, you know, Virginia Wade. I remember playing Virginia Wade when I was 14. Uh, so, I mean, it's pretty incredible the generation of players that I was able to play. And I'm just so fortunate and blessed that I was able to, to do that. Hey, let the record show you have a victory over Steffi Graf. So that's oh, that's gosh, no, thank you. <laughs> More with Kathy Rinaldi here on Tennis Channel Inside In. Uh, at what point, and we're looking at players playing later into their careers, at what point did you decide it was probably time to hang it up or think about a second career? You were relatively young in current day speak, but early 30s, was it time? Did you know in the back of your mind, okay, it's time to kind of hang it up and move on to something else? Yeah, I think, you know, it was just a natural transition for me. You know, I had a family, had a, had my son. Um, I played a little bit while he was uh, young, but then when he started school, I really wanted to um, be there and my priorities changed. So it was really a natural uh, transition for me. And although a tough one, because, you know, tennis plays such a big part of your life and the competition and the travel and, um, but you know, I've stayed involved. I, I think I always knew I would stay involved because I just love it so much. Um, and I went on to do other things. Um, you know, I did some commentating and some corporate outings and exhibitions and things like that, and then led into the coaching. And um, it was just such a natural fit for me. I just really enjoyed it right from the start. It was, I always say it was almost like a calling for me. And I, and I never thought I was going to be a coach, but um, once I got around that, um, it was, it was really special for me. Right. People know you now as the Billie Jean King cup coach for uh, team USA and, and on the surface, it's, uh, it is a great honor and it's something that came out of, not out of nowhere, but you were, you were plucked to take that role. But I don't think many people know it was close to 15 years of player development before that, where you were working with young players and developing future generational stars. 
what drew you to player development? Because I think your first job was with like 14 year olds. So what started getting you into, I want to work with the next generation. I want to get into that coaching uh, field. Yeah, I think, you know, I um, would hit with, I would offer to, you know, hit and work with some players when they were in town while they were still on tour. And I really enjoyed that. Um, and I was doing some coaching at a resort and club and I just, I thought, wow, you know, um, it would be great to work with the next young generation and stay involved and give back to a sport that's given me so, so much. And so when I got the call from the USTA, I, you know, I really um, was excited and went down and uh, started. I, I, I went at the opportunity and it, and I worked with the young ones first. And I'm so glad I did because I, I think, you know, you learn how to teach at that, not just be a coach, but it's also teaching. And, um, and I learned so much from other coaches. I mean, that's the great thing working at player development. We have such an incredible team and I'm still learning so much from all our coaches and from each other. Yeah. And, um, and it just was a natural fit. They put me on the road right away <laughs> and I just enjoyed it so much. Um, it was challenging. It was fun. It was rewarding. Um, like I said, um, you know, when you can make an impact on somebody, not just their tennis, but their life, I think there's nothing more rewarding than that, at least for me. And 14 year olds in that range, they're still, they're still being able to be molded. You know, they're not finished products. So I think you're going to get your hands dirtier with that. And uh, it could <laughs> lead to some great stuff. I, I've also, you know, heard about your days, like you're fully committed to this, where it's up early, scouting early, coaching, you're, you're, you're putting in, you know, more than a 40 hour work week, diving into this career, which I think also is commendable because no disrespect to anybody else, but some people don't look at coaching as a full-time job, especially when they had a solid playing career, but this has clearly become your passion if it wasn't already. Yeah. I mean, you know, I definitely made a commitment to this, um, to this, to the sport, to the players, um, to my, to my staff here, to all of our coaches, all of our staff are working long, long hours. Um, I think if you're all in, that's what it takes. And I think we lead by example, or we try to lead by example, but, um, you know, I just, um, don't know any other way. I think, you know, if you want to do something great, I think you have to be fully committed and, and, and that's what I've really tried to, to, to have been, um, and I hope the players know that, um, you know, I, I, I always look to get better, um, learn, continue my growth as well as a coach and as head of women's tennis and as the Billie Jean King Cup captain. So um, I'm very honored. I don't take this job for granted mm -hmm. one day. So I think that that also keeps me going that, uh, you know, like we want to keep raising the bar because when we first started, we didn't have that many uh, top hundred players and top ITF juniors and boy, have we grown and, you know, and that's not because of me by any means, that's because of all of us, the culture of working together yeah. and um, having one common goal and so much credit to our players who really uh, work hard each and every day. And we just try to keep raising the bar um, each and every year. I know your scouting is uh, intense also, because I actually, I don't know if you know this, I saw you in San Diego. It was during the, uh, during the women's event in October, Daniel Collins was playing and it was late <laughs> at night. It was chilly. There was people who were wearing parkas. You might've been one of them, but you have to be there to support an American player. So I was like, okay, this is a committed coach right here. This, this isn't something everybody would be doing. <laughs> So. I, I do, uh, I do like to watch all the American players. <laughs> there's no doubt about it. And, you know, there's, it's not a nine to five job. That's for mm -hmm. sure. That's not what I signed up for. And um, yes, I, I actually really love watching tennis too. And I, of course, I'm passionate about our American players, but I'm passionate about tennis in general. How did you land the head coaching position now? 2016, changeover at the top you mentioned generationally there was a changing of the guard as well so to speak going on you get the job the, the team wins the fed cup in the first year but the process of you becoming head coach was that something that you were eyeing for for years looking forward to that opportunity or did it just kind of organically happen 
Uh, you know, obviously that would be a huge honor for anyone. I was the coach under Zena Garrison for, uh, for a few years as well. So I enjoyed it. I was the junior, uh, Billie Jean King cup captain. I was the junior world championship, uh, captain. In fact, went back this year for that. Um, you know, it's not something, you know, that, you know, you'll ever get, um, it's certainly an, an honor. Um, obviously I was following Mary Jo Fernandez, and uh, she, I mean, I have nothing but love and respect for uh, MJ. She, she was incredible. And so, um, and, she, and by the way, she's been so supportive. Um, I'm so lucky um, to have such great, again, strong women be so supportive. Um, so, you know, I was very fortunate um, to be named uh, Billie Jean King Cup captain. And I have enjoyed every single day of it, whether it's been tough or great, or, you know, we've had tough losses. We've had some great wins, but I've enjoyed every single day of it. Where is that 2017 cup victory in Belarus? Kind of the Coco Vandoy show from my vantage point. But <laughs> where does that rank in your, I don't want to say personal life, but in your professional life, that's got to be high up there. Oh, absolutely. Um, no doubt about it. Um, you know, even the junior Billie Jean King Cup. I mean, anytime we can bring a group of girls together and, mm -hmm. and have one common goal, because tennis is so individual. So, you know, it, it is pretty spectacular to represent your country and, you know, bring this extraordinary group of young women together uh, for one goal and to accomplish it. It's it's like no other, uh, you know, we remember those, the win in Belarus very uh, vividly. So, um, and the celebration afterwards and just, you know, incredible, yeah. just absolutely incredible. I find that tennis players, because it's such an individual sport, they're just drawn to this team environment, maybe more. It's like the rare opportunity mm -hmm. to play a team sport. Did you feel that first as a player and now as a coach? Yeah, I always enjoyed playing for my country. It was always fun because I felt like um, you could really get to know each other uh, on a different level. Um, you know, you didn't always know your teammates maybe extremely well, but, um, you know, it was always really a fun week. Like those were really great experiences and you walked away. I think our captains, you know, went out of their way to make that a special experience for us, whether we won or we lost. And um, we walked away thinking, wow, that was, that was just awesome. And that's kind of my approach a little bit, you know, is I really want to make it special for the girls. Um, and I shouldn't call them girls. I should call them ladies um, because I want them to, when they look back on their careers, I, I hope that they'll say, wow, that was a really special week. We had a lot of fun and we competed hard and we worked hard. It just seems fun to see these players let their guards down. We know yeah. how competitive it is, but it's a great you know, camaraderie event too. And I referenced the scouting. It's not all easy. There is tough decisions to be made. What if you could walk me through kind of the processes of picking a team, what Ugh. studying year round, if there's just who's playing well, managing injuries, if you could talk a little bit about the, the difficulties of selecting a team. Mm -hmm. Well, you just, you, uh, you nailed it. It's the toughest job of a captain, no doubt about it, especially when you have so many, um, so many great players to pick and choose from and everybody wants to play, which is amazing too. I mean, credit to all the players. So, um, you know, as captain, I never want to disappoint anybody. That's the hardest thing for me personally is um, picking a team. And mm -hmm. because I, you know, I'm obviously going to disappoint some players and I never want to do that. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you know, I, yeah. I work hard for the players. Um, so, you know, you, you do look at everything. Um, you look at the surface, you look at the head to heads, um, you look at schedules, you obviously, you know, there's injuries and there's things, um, that you, you know, all kinds of things that you look at, you look at team chemistry, but we're very blessed in that department with the U S because I think the culture and when U S women's tennis is, they all truly really like each other and get along. And so that's, that's fun. So it's, it's really tough. You have to look at doubles. The formats are different. Like we have a format coming up in April. It's four singles match and a one doubles, whereas you get to the final and then it's two singles and a doubles. So, you know, you look at, you have to look yeah. at all of those things as well. 
yeah better countries in terms of talent it's going to be harder to pick because they're just such a talent fool mm-hmm. yeah but more with kathy rinaldi a couple more things here on tennis channel inside in this has been uh, just a, a great chat with the uh captain of the u.s fed cup u.s billy jean king cup team uh, i do have to talk about your other role in the game in the last couple of years and that's been like tennis matchmaker uh, a couple of weeks ago i had taylor townsend on the show and i just asked her how did you become partners with Katie McNally? And she's like, well, Kathy Rinaldi just reached out to me and said, Hey, these players need partners. And little did I know I'm talking now to uh, the creator of a U.S. open finals team, but in all seriousness, is that something you like to do to just kind of, I have been known to be matchmaker uh, off the court as well, but we won't talk about those because I've had some some flops. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So it's not all home runs. Got it. No, but I, yeah, you know, it was funny because um, I just thought, wow, I I talked to Tom like, Hey, you need to reach out to Katie. And I just thought, wow, that would be a really, a really great team and both incredible young ladies. I mean, just, um, both really love tennis and so much personality. So, and then there they are in the finals of the U S open, which was so exciting for me to watch both of them because I've worked with both of them and had the opportunity to work with them when they were younger and take on them on trips. And, you know, uh, Taylor and I work closely together and she uh, was on the junior Billie Jean King cup captain. So was Katie. So it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. And that's kind of the role of player development too, right? Like we're looking at these generations, you're seeing the skill sets and what I, what I love about this current crop of, of us women is that there's varying age groups and some of them like Jesse Pagula has her best career year later in her twenties, yeah. you have Coco Goff coming up as a team. So as a team, so it's not all the same route, same platform. And I think that just speaks to not just the talent level, but the development level as well. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many different pathways to our sport and, um, you know, what an incredible year uh, Jess has had. I'm just so proud of all of our American players. I mean, it's, I mean, we're close to having four, four uh, Americans in the top 10 again. And, and, you know, Alicia Parks has just uh, moved in. Katie McNally finished her year uh, strong. Claire Lou. I mean, you can go on and on. Um, you know, and I certainly don't want to forget any, but any of the players. But they're all having such uh, such a great year. And I think 2023 is even more exciting because so much more can happen, yeah. and there's so much room for growth. We have so many um, good young players coming out of college, and just some good young talent um, that's looking to make a move. Yeah. I also want to mention, cause you're, you work with her too, uh, Danielle Collins, her compete, uh, her compete see. level seems to be off the chart. I mean, that is, that's a fighter in tennis speak. She is, you know what? Um, she, uh, she was actually here just last week. She's such a great, she's just so much fun. I, I love being around her. She's fun. Um, and she, um, just strikes the ball so beautifully. And how about this return of serves? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Uh, I, I do have one more thing to kind of bring up, and that's, you know, the the lighter moments. There was a Fed Cup tie, a Billie Jean King Cup tie in uh, Asheville this year. And a good friend of the show, uh, Blair Henley, was kind of taking some video backstage. And we're like, oh, USA won. Hey, right. backstage. What happens at Billie Jean <laughs> King Cup captain? At Billie Jean King Cup usually stays at Billie Jean. There was uh, there were some champagne bottles. I think House of Pain Jump Around was coming on. The players were excited. And then the captain was excited. There here comes <laughs> Kathy Rinaldi breaking it down. So. Oh, my oh, yeah. gosh. Oh, yeah. like this. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dropped it like it's hot. Oh, now you're coming embarrassing in. me. You come, come in, Don't I'm look at my dance stuff. moves, whatever you do. <laughs> no, uh, it's fun though. And and I, I do want to kind of bring it together with what do you, you know, how, how does this younger generation, these, these younger crop of girls, they kind of reinvigorate you and kind of give you energy. What do you learn? Oh, absolutely. I, I listen, there's no doubt about it. I'm getting more out of this than, 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 the, than I can give them. That's for sure. Uh, they give me so much, um, in return. They're just a joy to be around. They really are. And, you know, whether we're doing a TikTok or we're going to escape the room, um, I think we had an egg hunt there mm. in uh, Asheville because it was right around Easter. So I had an Easter egg hunt. Boy, were they competitive. <laughs> um, you know, I just, you know, we just have a lot of fun. We try to we try to do um, some team 
activities um, and just really have fun together. All right. Dance moves are going to be off limits for now, but there might be a video out there online because that always stays. Oh, thanks, Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Rinaldi, this has been a blast. The last question, have you thought about, you know, an end date at all? Do you think you're going to stay involved in the game for an indefinite amount of time? You've given back a lot more and it's been, you know, a long, it's been longer than your pro playing career now. So how do you, how much longer do you see yourself uh, being involved in the game? Well, um, Wow, I haven't been asked that. I haven't even thought that. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't plan to stay in here as long as I can make it a positive impact um, on American tennis, but our sport in general and um, pl our players' lives. I mean, I think um, it's just, I can't put into words how much I enjoy it. Um, I, you know, haven't really thought about an end game. Um, I think it's always going to be in my life in one way or another. And I hope so. Um, like I said, I don't take this job or what I'm doing for granted. Um, each and every day, I try to prove myself and, um, and I just thoroughly love it. So um, if, if I don't, then I wouldn't be doing it, but I do. I love it. It's my passion. And um, I'm very thankful to my parents who introduced me to this sport at such a young age. And I'm very fortunate to everybody around me to give me the opportunities that I've had. Well, I know U.S. women's tennis is uh, very thankful as well. Uh, the game and the sport is in good hands. Kathy Rinaldi, thank you so much for joining Tennis Channel Inside In, one of the most respected people in tennis. Glad we were finally able to do this and talk about the serious and some of the lighter moments. But best of luck going forward as the captain of the Billie Jean King Cup U.S. team. And uh, thank you again for joining the show. Thanks so much, Mitch. Appreciate it.